What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. Hey, happy anniversary. Hey, happy anniversary. <laughs> Thanks, Mom, for reminding us of our anniversary. We're so bad. We're we're very not <laughs> sentimental people, I think. I mean, we are when it, when it matters, but... Yeah. I just, we forgot today was our anniversary. There's been a lot going on. We've been really busy. I know. My mom sent me a picture of the two of us. <laughs> and I was like, happy so, anniversary. I was like. so bad. At least we both <laughs> forgot. That's why we're meant to be together. <laughs> yeah. I was just, I just held up the phone and you were like, oh my God. Yeah. My eyes almost fell out of my head. Eight anyway, years. Eight years. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. We, we uh, broke out some wine for this episode. And we also just got really good news on a house we put in an offer on today. So this might be a kind of sloppy episode there's been so much going on like good stuff and you know yeah let's get drunk and talk about Eli and Freaks <laughs> yeah let's what do it like, 2002 that was 2002 2002 yeah much I, I asked last week if people were down with another spider movie and you overwhelmingly all said yes so I get to edit more spider stuff although it's CGI spiders so it's not as bad yeah probably not as bad no because even the fake like the the animatronic spiders in arachnophobia was they look so real yeah. so these are just kind of yeah these are cg as shit they're not too bad they're not the for worst 2002 they're not the worst there's especially some, for 2002 there's some shots that are not great and you know it kind of feeds into the tone of the movie which is really campy uh it's definitely part comedy and yeah, it's not like sci-fi channel shit, especially sci-fi channel shit around the 2000s when it was either awful graphics or the thing I always hated, you just never saw what it was that they were talking about. Sure. You see these spiders a lot and they look serviceable for what this movie is doing. Yeah. So that's fine. I do wish that that tarantula was a practical, but that would be a very large practical and would probably increase the budget a lot they, i don't think this was a big budget worked. movie though because What's if you really? see the producers it's fucking roland emmerich That's and right. uh dean devlin yes. who those guys made independence day godzilla the day after the big budget disaster movies the big the 90s the matthew project godzilla right yes that so one yeah yeah they yeah. did yeah this movie, because it was written and directed by Ellery <laughs> Elkayim, who he... New Zealand, Kiwi. Yeah, New Zealand. He made a short, I guess, that was then kind of made into this movie that mm -hmm. I think it... I forget if it premiered on, I think, FX, but he did a short that basically was like 15 minutes long and inspired by movies like them. Inspired. By movies like them. Inspired by <laughs> movies like them. Classic old school retro. See the rest of this guy's flicks. career after this movie. I saw Without a Paddle, the sequel. The sequel to Without I did a Paddle. Not, I know there was a sequel to No that. one did. Oh my God. And he also did the two Return of the Living Dead sequels, that like numbers four and five, which I understand are just trash. Because, like, I think the first three are all very different movies. But, like, the third uh, Return of the Le Living Dead movie was made by, uh, uh, shit, an actual, like, horror filmmaker. Mm -hmm. um, hold on. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, oh, Yuzna. It was made oh, by fucking Yuzna. Okay. So you had a name behind it, and I believe that each of the first three Return of the Living Deads, we've only seen the first one, yeah. uh, has a specific tone and idea. But this guy, this guy put out four and five a decade the plus same later. year. Oh, they both they came both out? came out in 2005. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, and then the sequel to Without a Paddle. Other interesting projects by people involved, I believe, was it... Is it Dean Devlin who his directorial debut was Geostorm, which I've never seen, but I'm obsessed with <laughs> because it's the funniest idea for a movie of all time. What is that one? Oh, that was 2017. That wasn't yeah, too far away. Just a 
big dumb disaster movie. Okay. Yeah, Geostorm. I wish it was technically horror so we could review it, but I don't think <laughs> it counts. <laughs> no, I see. That's the thing is I don't count disaster movies among horror movies, which I do separate from monster movies. So like Godzilla, yes. Yeah, because dis- day after tomorrow, no. Yeah, it's weird how disaster movies. I th- yeah. They kind of fall into thriller category and not and some thrillers are horror but yeah i don't know why disaster movies for some it's like reason. cloverfield i would barely put in the it has would, a toe in the horror genre at least it, i would be fine reviewing it yeah something even though it's a a disaster movie but like yeah, but uh like, 2012 no yeah right we're, we're like ones with twi- like twister I don't know if I would consider no. horror, even though it scared the shit out of me. You know what? Our buddy Mike Flanagan did come down on the side of Contagion being a horror movie, though. And he wrote uh-huh. like an article about it. And I, it was after, you know, all this shit happened and people told me to cover Contagion. I was like, no, it's not, not a horror, horror movie. And Flanagan comes out. Thanks, Mike. Fucking <laughs> just yeah, making me look dumb. Yeah, we don't have more authority than Mike. Sorry. Yeah, it's like, all right, I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> right. oh, fuck me then, I'm wrong. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Dude, yeah, that opening scene of Twister. I, I think kids in the 90s, uh, because of that movie, were all irrationally afraid of tornadoes. I was terrified, I was of, terrified tornadoes. of that. And we kind of get them sometimes in Michigan. They're mm-hmm. pretty rare. And we had basements, at least. We have basements to I hide in. I hid in many oh, I had Oh, I had a tornado plan for mm-hmm. the family. Just because that opening scene from Twister. I mean, scary. we should really start talking about Eight-Legged Freaks, but just one last story before we get going sure. is I will always remember when I was a kid and I was at my grandma's house when a tornado warning was happening. And I called my mom and I was like, Mom, I have my two nets in my bedroom full of stuffed animals. I love those fucking stuffed animals. Make sure you put them in the basement. I don't want them to get sucked up in the tornado. So I spend the night at my grandma's. I'm in the basement. The next day I go home and I go into my room and I look at those and she told me that she did. She was like, I put them in the basement. I look at those nets. Everyone's arranged exactly how I left them. And I was like, that's bullshit, mom. You lied to me. They could have gotten sucked up by a tornado. She said get wrecked, stuffed animals. (laughs) Oh man, that's such a bummer. I know. All right, eight-legged freak. Okay, freaks. eight-legged freak starring David Arquette, a 31-year-old my age, yes. David Arquette, starring in this, which revealed to me that he was 25 in He's the first 25? screen. He's He's a baby in that movie. I, I didn't realize that Cor- uh, Courtney Cox was older than him is, by, yeah, I think she five was five or six five years, or six years. Yeah, which is cool. That's dope, but hey. good for both of them. I think they're both uh, I know. doing well. I was, I was sad <laughs> when they got divorced. I was yeah. a little bummed. They're a cute couple. So David Arquette, uh, Carrie Wooher, who yes. is perhaps the first actor to uh, double feature on our Creature Feature I Summer. Think so I think, yeah, she's coming back. For... From Arachnophobia. Uh, Anaconda. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, the A movies. Yes. She's uh, the, uh, the movie, the sound. Is she? Sound? Wild sound. Wild sound. Gotta get that wild sound while we have sex in the jungle. Yeah, she was Owen Wills. She kept fucking around with Owen Wilson in that movie. Yeah. Uh, She is here also older than David Arquette. Here she is 35 and playing the mother to an 18-year-old Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, before it was revealed in the movie that it was a teen pregnancy, I even told James, like, they they just cast her and did the math and said, we'll just make it a teen pregnancy. It's kind of part of the story. They address it. Yeah, it's at least brought up, but still, come on. Because Skojo, is that what she's, Scarjo? Scarjo, Skojo. Skojo. <laughs> the kids Sco- can call scoured, you Skojo. Scour Johnson. Uh, Sc- <laughs> Scarjo does say, oh, I'm not going to be a 16-year-old with a kid like you. Yeah, stuck so here it's and being up. a trailer trash comp. It's harsh, man. It's pretty harsh. Uh, yeah, Scarjo, present day, highest paid uh, actress yeah. in the country. That's... Since 2018, I think. Mm-hmm. Crazy. And she is not that much money. older than us. No, I didn't realize how like young that she it's is. Fucked. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucked up. It's fucked up. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's our main cast. Yeah. This uh, this movie is not what I thought it was going to be. And oh, I, really? This I, movie is exactly what I thought really, it was going to be. I think because I, I mentioned last week that I mix this up all the time with uh, Evolution for no reason. That's they right, might have yeah. come out the same year. And Evolution, I just remember being kind of filthy and really stupid. Is it filthy? I don't know. Maybe that's just my memory of it. I remember it. there are butts in it at least. Yeah, because they 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 moon 
soldiers maybe well also i think the aliens in it kind of have butthole looking that they put they realize they can kill the aliens with head and shoulders i think all right it's a weird one <laughs> it's a weird one the early 2000s were weird and fun uh yeah i think this was more straightforward than i thought it was gonna be is what i mean i thought this was gonna be a bit um just dumber and maybe meaner oh yeah it's not mean it's not a it's not a cruel movie which no. i think maybe it's early enough in the 2000s that we're not full just mean comedy yeah yet. it's really comedy by, like, just the... gets so mean in the 2000s so yeah yeah it's it's fine it there are so many homages to old movies, and because we covered them a few weeks ago with Ivory Trees, we I noticed so many nods to it here. Not it even is just even it's featured, playing on the TV, yeah. yeah. But there are shots that are identical, which I think is kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, the in, you know the famous shot of the two ants coming over the hill in the desert is recreated exactly in this movie. Which, okay, I, I, I'm into that. It's clearly a made by someone who loves those movies and it's a lot of fun so i guess do we want to just start going through it i guess yeah we'll, uh we'll... it takes place in prosperity arizona which sounds a whole lot like uh perfection in tremors yeah yeah so i think that could also be an odd this did remind me of tremors also i yeah. i think a good if you want to do a triple feature which no one ever does because that's a whole day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> double feature sure triple feature eh. <laughs> Most people just do that with Lord of the Rings, I think. <laughs> uh, but if you want to do a triple feature, honestly, them, Tremors, and then Eight-Legged Freaks, is if you want your desert kind of mutant creatures, and, you know, they're they're all very similar, and it feel like they're kind of equidistant almost, I think. They're a good, you know, evolution of the movie. Yeah. Which is fun. Yeah, and you got, uh, yeah, of course, it is in a small town in the desert, mm-hmm. which always seems to be the case with these movies. Mm-hmm. It's just a good setting because uh, you get the isolation. You know, we knock down the phone lines pretty early on in this, so they can't reach any outside forces to come help them. Yeah. You can't really run away. It's desert all around you. And the desert, too, in America, is so we t- we've talked about this before, but if you pick any region in the country where just weird shit's going down, it's always the the desert roswell roswell nuclear, nuclear testing, testing yep. all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. it's you know because it's so much empty space yeah to... it's like yeah you could hide anything in the middle of all that desert but yeah we've got a, a conspiracy theorist radio station kind of framing this movie yeah played by doug e doug doug, e. doug yeah who is his name harlan in this mm-hmm. it's so weird how the conspiracy theory radio in this movie and at this time is kitsch and kind of weird and niche and those characters and oddity and i think it's used to add some character to this town where now the way we look at conspiracy theories and conspiracy theory radio like this is very different yeah watching this in 2020 is kind of a a trip because back then, this is, you know, oh, just a weird conspiracy people. Yeah, it's, harmless. It's a fun. And- doesn't have the ear of the president. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Dougie Doug is a radio announcer who's just uh, talking about aliens and all co- sorts of conspiracies. Yeah, and it's so funny how the conspiracies, too, are very early. To th- he talks about mad cow disease, oh, yeah. for one. And, it, dude, it's crazy how much that freaked everyone out. Like, even in my Sopranos rewatch, Mad Cow Disease comes up, which is everyone was so fucking scared of Mad Cow. There's a guy driving with barrels of toxic waste, as you will, Mm -hmm. and he swerves to avoid a rabbit, which, like, that guy's probably just going to hit that rabbit, let's be real. Yeah. But when he swerves, one of those barrels flies out and goes into the water supply. Uh Uh-oh. Yep. Right next to uh, the spider farm. Yeah, it's a Taft's exotic spider farm <laughs> yeah and that's a guy named joshua who is who's played by tom noonan who was uh frank frankenstein's monster in monster yeah, squad Monster Squad. so cool. uncredited in this movie for some reason oh really yeah interesting he's a weird looking guy needs a manny because when he this little yeah, kid yeah, shows up and his, yeah his hands are, are real gross i don't know why why and he's it's playing a around the dirt all day choice. yeah like, it's just gross but I like that, of course, he 
it, it, does he just get typecast as guy who hangs out with kids not in like a creepy way but just just like yeah he's just a weird dude and the kid you know kids like him yeah kids like uh are they like his weirdness and how uh you know yeah he's an adult who you know he's not creepy to, towards kids. that's not what this i know it's so hard to phrase it in just, a way that he, he's not an adult who has succumbed to the boredom of adulthood where Mm -hmm. oh we can't have fun anymore because we're grown-ups yeah he still is is he's excited by spiders just like our little kid nerd yeah mike played by scott tara who i guess had a role in dickie roberts former child star (laughs) uh this kid yeah you said while we were watching he feels like a kid actor about uh 12 years too late Mm -hmm. could have been a big hit in the early 90s yeah maybe run around with dennis the menace or richie rich that's yeah that's you know one of those kids those early 90s got the center part the very gelled center part the big old glasses yes very Mm -hmm. good 90s hair yeah he's he does a good job in this movie scott tara the actor Mm -hmm. he's a solid little kid actor he i mean the actor was 14 or 15 he looks a little younger but he does yeah he plays younger for sure Mm -hmm. but so Joshua is feeding these crickets that I think he found maybe in this pond that had the toxic waste dumped into it. And he's like, oh, man, I've been feeding my spiders these crickets and they're getting huge. Yeah, because this is a week later. It says one week later. (laughs) So he's feeding his spiders these radioactive crickets. So his spiders are getting gigantic. And then he tells Mike about the specific kind of spider he has. I think orb weavers. Well, he goes through a whole list of them. And Mm -hmm. then all of those spiders end up popping up throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and uh, I, I... feel like i should have paid more attention when he was giving the spider rundown here in the beginning of the scene because all these spiders end up popping up doing their things throughout the movie so you got the trap door spiders those are so scary those are scary as shit they come up from underground grab you and pull you underground yeah. uh you got the yeah the jumping spiders mm-hmm. uh the what orb the orb weaver spiders and the reason i brought that up first is because they're he... like the main ones I think. yeah they're there it's the big bad spider at the end is an orb weaver the female queen. the queen mm-hmm. because what happens is i guess all the males compete for her attention by giving her the best present and they bring her stuff to eat and he yeah, the, says the web it up yeah and jo- <laughs> and and joshua uh tom newton says <laughs> you know how women love breakfast in bed this is a little kid and i like just <laughs> Hey, you, by the way, you want to come look at some tapes I got in the bag? It just could have gotten weird. That's all uh, I'm saying. I, I think there was maybe, I don't know, the tarantulas in there. Just a lot of spiders. Just a lot of spiders. A lot of spiders. But yeah, the orb weaver is the big one because the, the queen, he says, is three times the size of the males. Yeah. So that's setting up for the big bad in the end is the big old queen bitch. So yeah, bicycle kid goes home because his alarm goes off. His I'm late for something. Yeah, his alarm, alarm goes off. He's like, oh no, I'm going to be in so much trouble. Then set your alarm 15 minutes earlier that than that. That's you don't get in trouble. Why would you set your alarm for the time when you're going to get in trouble, you idiot? Yeah. That's, you're supposed to be so smart. That's always some of my favorite movie logic. Yeah, the alarm goes happens. off the and alarm, you're like, The oh. I'm late alarm instead of I should get going alarm. It's the, <laughs> oh, fuck, you're already late alarm. Yeah. Yeah. So Stupid, he, smart he leaves kid. and then basically right after he leaves, Tom Newton realizes a spider is not in its little cage anymore. And then there's spiders everywhere. Ugh. Spiders everywhere. Uh, oh, yeah. And he has a parrot has a who parrot. says, I see dead people. Yeah, he's like, he's just doing quotes. Mm-hmm. It was like the scary movie bird of the, movie. scary movie two, scary movie two. which we just we did a Patreon commentary track. We animals in mm-hmm. movies. God, they're so fucking funny By every the, time. That parrot gets killed and uh, every animal gets killed in this movie. You got a cat getting murdered. You got a dog getting murdered. Yeah, there's an animal in this. It's dead. Yeah, ostriches getting murdered. Just everyone's yeah. dying. This is not like Pippin and the Meg. Where we get a oh, surprise. Yeah, live. No, every <laughs> animal's just fucked in this movie. <laughs> David Arquette rolling up in town, getting off a Greyhound bus, and for some I think just the imagery of desert and Greyhound, all I could think of was fucking rat race. And like Cuba Gooding Jr.'s driving this bus and there's a bunch of Lucy's on board. David Arquette's <laughs> coming back from the I Love Lucy convention. Yeah. Way. Way. Oh man, fucking rat race. Oh, Love it. He goes and talks to his uh, cigarette smoking Aunt Gladys. Yes. I love Aunt Gladys. (laughs) Aunt Gladys is so fun. She's just one of those women who, for some reason, I have such an affection towards. 
I think maybe because the uh, one of my my family friends growing up who when both my parents were working she would come over and watch me was also a very tanned kind of leathery (laughs) cigarette smoking just really nice woman who so I think for some reason that's like a comfort thing for me but those are always the most fun women to Man, talk to you because they got stories. If you tan and smoke a whole lot, you are just aiming for skin like a really beanbag chair, boys. man. Yeah. You are just looking for that leather. Platinum blonde hair. <laughs> I love it. Those are honestly, it's a weird, yeah, comfort. Isn't there a character thing. in Mars Attacks who's kind of like that? I probably. Mars Attacks, another one where it's like, is that kind of horror? I don't know. It's sci-fi disaster and disappointing. We, God, we tried. I think we, we mentioned this. On yeah, the podcast. We tried re- watching it. I don't love it. I would give it another shot. But I would yeah, try it, it again. Uh, all right, so we, yeah, we love Gladys. She's great. Gladys is great. We love Gladys. Uh, Bike Kid's mom is Carrie Wooer, who's yeah, the town hot. sheriff. Yeah, Bike Kid's got a hot mom. Sorry, kid. Yeah, I we, told you that we had it a few sucks friends to have a hot mom. Right, we had a few friends who had a hot mom, and I'm so sorry, guys. Matt, I'm so sorry, man, for all the times that we gave you shit for your hot mom. Oh, no. Yeah. Hot you, mom. Hot mom. <laughs> yeah, she's, what, the sheriff? Town sheriff, mother to bike kid, and mother to uh, 18-year-old ScarJo Ashley, mm-hmm. who is on the back of a motocross bike with some town bullies. Yeah, it's totally a crotch rocket, one of those little, yeah. little motorbikes. Well, one of them ain't going to get in trouble because his stepdad is the mayor. Yeah. Brett. He's mm-hmm. the one who's uh, who's courting her daughter. Yes. Yeah. Brett. Fucking Brett. Yeah, stepkid named Brett. <laughs> <Step-kid>? <laughs> that's he's not just, just a stepkid. Got... No, I'm saying that's like very. It's just <laughs> my stepkid Brett. Yeah. Well, his fucking his dad is Mayor Wade. My stepdad, like stepdad Wade. Wade. Yeah, both you know those they, work those perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this makes sense to no one else, but just my stepdad, Wade, just sounds extremely great. Who has a ponytail? Oh, God, it's gross. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Ashley, we get a glimpse into her room early on, rocking a whole lot of really posters. Really good posters. We got Linkin Park. Matchbox 20. Matchbox 20. Third Eye Blind. P.O.D. P.O.D. And an American Badass poster, which I could not confirm nor deny if it were Kid Rock. Or maybe she's a big Undertaker fan. I'm gonna I think guess it's Kid it's Rock. Kid Rock. It's probably Kid Rock. I don't know if she's riding around on bikes all day. Maybe. That's right, exactly. She's into guys Although who ride motorbikes. The idea of Undertaker on a crotch, <laughs> rocket, crotch rocket is rocket. so funny. <laughs> He's so big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. What uh, was his music for? Rollin'. It was Rollin'. Yeah, okay, that's right. I think right. he had American Badass for like two shows, and then they switched it up to Rollin', possibly Air Raid remix of Rollin'. Nice. Which is a separate version. Hell yeah. Yeah. Did we ever tell the story about how at our friend Beth and Mike's wedding... We, oh my god we did not tell this i don't story. think we told this story so everyone who listens to the podcast knows that james and i love limp biscuit we love limp biscuit so much yeah. um, honestly if they after covid's over if there was a limp biscuit like i would pay oh i'd pay top I would dollar pay a stupid amount of money to go to see limp get biscuit. good seats for limp biscuit um, west borland or not preferably with west borland yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> but uh we're so it's getting towards the end of the night at our friend's wedding and DJs taking requests like all DJs, all good DJs should do. And we go to the, to the DJ booth. And by the way, we're members of the wedding party. We're, yeah. We are in we the wedding. Stood we stood up stood there, up. dude. You so, fucking saw us. I think if you stand up at a wedding, you get at least one. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, man. You know, so we go up to, <laughs> We go to the DJ and it's super loud. So we're like, can you play Rollin' by Limp Biscuit?" And he's like, what? what? And I'm like, Rollin'. Yeah, we do the little, the, the hand motion. like By Limp Biscuit. <laughs> Rollin'. And what is it? What? God, I think he was like, maybe. Yeah, he goes, maybe, which means no. Yeah. <laughs> Go away. It was a very rude, it w- curt maybe. It was maybe. such a, I'm a professional DJ, and this will piss off all of the older family members, so I'm not playing this. And I've never felt 
so judged. I was, I, I, I was I, very I, offended. I we felt, marched up to Mike I and Beth. I felt it in my stomach. Dude, yeah, I'm super drunk. I go over to Mike, who, by the way, he just got married and is talking to his family. I'm like, Mike, your DJ won't play Limp Biscuit. <laughs> it was so funny because Mike was like, hey, you know, if you like this DJ, you can have him for your wedding too. <laughs> I was like, nope. DJ. Fuck that guy. He is not working our play because our wedding's going to have Limp Biscuit. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I I truly felt. I felt like my character is really being evaluated. I felt, yeah, I haven't felt that judge since like high school or college, you know, (laughs) just like it cut me. I was like, what? Maybe. (laughs) How dare you, sir? (laughs) Okay. So Mayor Wade wants to sell the mine that this uh, place sits atop of because Mayor Wade's a shady guy. He's storing toxic waste there for money that nobody knows about. That's why the toxic waste was there in the first place. And he's having what a meeting at the mall at the mall that he uh, had built but it's it's a failure of a mall. There, he also has yeah. an ostrich farm that's apparently he been a does. failure. It's good meat, it's, he says. You know what? I mean, it's not. That's the thing is that's one where I could get on board with it. If it's locally farms. sourced, you got all those ostriches. And they're less. I think they're less energy technically to take care of. I could be oh, totally, like environmentally. Yeah, I could be totally wrong here. There's been a few times in American history where there have been movements to replace cows with some like hippos it was a big thing i'm not even this is more more hippo trivia from me that this this is actually real okay there was a movement i forget when it would have been maybe late 1800s because everyone that's when all the everyone was just crazy shit idea yeah because truly was literally the wild west so that was like no one has any crazy ideas anymore like that no one's got yeah (laughs) But uh, apparently, uh, for a while, hippos it was a it was a thing being floated that like floated. we'll bring over hippos and it they're you can domesticate them and we will we'll replace anyway. That's actually like that's for real. That's not me thinking hippos can take down planes. This okay. is like actual American history. Google it. Hippos farms. Hippo America. burger. Okay. Um, but yeah, this so this mayor, yeah, very good ponytail. I would love to see a fight between all of the um, ponytail characters of horror because we got Bill him, from it. Bill from yes, the Bill from the original it. Reggie Bannister, who would win? Oh yeah, because um, he always is gonna win. <laughs> and uh, uh, um, John Voight from Anaconda. Oh, he has a ponytail. I forgot. Oh yeah, he's I was got too distracted little, by his voice. He's got a weird little pon- bonus of he's bald on top and it's the mm-hmm. you know, kind of wrap around. Yeah. Ponytail. You can yeah, I can't think of any other. But that it's a good four way fight already. It Maybe is. tag team match. That's like main event material. It's really good. But Reggie would just win because he just duct taped shotguns to Jabber <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of matches, during this meeting, it's a raucous and uh the mayor's like, This is not the WWF, which yeah, is funny right. on a number of levels. One, David Arquette, pro wrestler. Mm-hmm. former WCW heavyweight champion. The, him winning the top belt in the company of WCW is an event that many point to as being like, that's why that company failed. Because shortly after, WWF bought WCW, put it out of business oh. shortly after. However, David Arquette has continued to work the indie circuit to this day. He was yeah. not just a celebrity a wrestler. wrestler. He's That's what into I thought it. for so long is that he was kind of a gimmick wrestler. That's maybe, what everyone thinks. Maybe a yeah. fan who, because that's what we would be, if we showed up and we won a, the 24-7 Give belt. Give us the 24-7 please, belt. WWE, please let please. us hold the 24 I, I can roll up. Please, yeah. Throw me into a trash can, please. <laughs> Just let me do it, please. I'll be so good at it. Um... But no, no, he no, works no. the indie circuit. He, I think he, he does actually, hardcore matches too. Oh, like people shit. breaking fluorescent light bulbs on each other. I think he even had a match where he like bled a little too much and was like, I'm sorry, I got like, fuck. but he fucking. Yeah, he's the real deal wrestler. Uh, second funny part about this, this movie came out a month after WWF changed its name to wow. WWE. So like when they were recording, it would have been Dude, WWF. Fuck you but... ADR, doing ADR over <laughs> yeah. WWE. This isn't the w- WWE. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. No, the, I love the it. Panda got the pin, dude. Yeah, love time capsule shit like that. Mm-hmm. By the way, this mall looks not even the whole mall itself, but just for some reason the way that the the shots of this town meeting are 
composed and set up and all of the weird extras in the audience, just weird townies and stuff. It looks like the beginning of Chopping Mall. Oh, It yeah. looks like the pitch <laughs> about the, the Chopping Mall robots. With those characters from Eating Raul where yes, we're like, what are they there for? Just all the like big fans of, you know, references to Eating Raul for all those Eating Raul heads. <laughs> Hey, I want to talk to you this week about our sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh. We know HelloFresh because uh, we talk about them all the time, but it's good stuff, especially now uh, in pandemic times. Yeah. Where we shouldn't be going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Stay home if you can. You go, go. You can go to safe places. Yeah. Go to a park. Yeah. That's nice. Exactly. But if you, may, you know, the grocery store is kind of scary right now. Yeah, you, you haven't been. I do all that. No, you do all the grocery because I'm high risk for COVID. Yeah. And James is a gallant knight goes <laughs> grocery shopping. But, but uh, I don't enjoy it. And that's why HelloFresh is here. Yeah, it's why we do also get meal delivery and it's so helpful um, saved trips to the grocery store and we get fresh stuff delivered which is awesome mm-hmm. all pre-measured so you don't have to worry about if you get the right amount of something yeah. or if you get too much of something then you're throwing it away and it's wasteful yeah we don't have to worry about stuff going bad which is nice you don't have to worry about, you know, sometimes, oh, what's this weird eggplant I forgot about in the back of the Yeah, fridge? what was I going to do with that eggplant? Yeah. HelloFresh tells you. Yeah. And that's the other thing is I just love not having to decide what to make. Because, you know, you can only look up so many recipes online and do that for yourself. HelloFresh is like, hey, what, what if you tried this one? Yeah, there's a little book that comes with all your meals or like they're little like meal cards that tell you what you got in your box every week and you just pick one it's yeah, good it's good it's just it's so efficient and yeah it's just nice and sustainable too it comes packaged with minimal waste and everything so so if you want to try hello fresh you can go to hellofresh.com slash eight zero dead meat and use the code eight zero dead meat to get a total of eighty dollars off including wow. free shipping on your first box which that's Pretty $80, nice. dollars, that's almost 100 It is almost a like, You round up. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not how that works. I don't know. That. <laughs> <laughs> but free shipping on a box, that's that's a big deal because those boxes are kind of heavy. It's a lot of food in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If people are just listening to this, they can't see what you're doing. I'm, I'm mimicking lifting a heavy box. Oh, okay. Obviously. Oh. Oh. Uh. Very obvious to people listening. <laughs> oh. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Go to HelloFresh.com <laughs> slash 80DevMeat. Use the code 80DevMeat. Total $80 off, including free shipping. Just letting you know that again. Because I got to say it more than once. <laughs> <laughs> Go to HelloFresh.com for more details. I love the mall as a setting. I mean, obviously, Dawn of the Dead. Great. Chopping Mall. Great. Uh, Stranger Things season three. I I know. I always love something set in a mall. Yeah. Mall it's rats. Fun. <laughs> mall rats. Uh, not director's cut. Not the director's cut. Not director's cut. cut. Don't do it. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. It's too much. And don't show your uh, girlfriend slash wife mall rats for the first time with the director's cut. Me and Gressel were like, Chelsea and Erica, you guys are going to love this movie. <laughs> yeah, we checked out kind of fast. <laughs> David Arquette is at the meeting and he's like, no, you can't sell this town and its mines because I'm back and my dad was the one who owned the mines. And we're going to find this gold in the mine that my dad used to talk about. This feels like the most non plot point of they all find time the they gold find, in the end okay but and then nothing and then they blow up the mine and then there's not really a oh no, no you know what? because they employ they end up employing the whole town okay and the conspiracy theory radio guys got gold teeth at the end that's right kind of that's right that's but it right. also it just kind of feels like a big nothing yeah and I I kind of wanted a little bit more like I if I had to rewrite this script I would make the mayor more of a villain because I feel like in this like he's still he's not like a, halfway there yeah he's not a great dude but he's not a he's not an obstacle he's and, just he, and his end head. is real lame he just like disappears kind of in yeah, that mine shaft he's not much of a you know anything for our characters to have to deal with he's just kind of a dick Mm -hmm. so i'm thinking especially because they touch on this a little bit it's it's the mayor wanting to sell out the town and that's a thing especially around the 2000s again like 
the Sopranos that becomes a thing. The idea of taking things that make a small town unique and selling them to bigger corporations. And that's why every town ends up looking the fucking same because everything is owned by a few companies, you mm-hmm. know, and that's in like the 2000s. That's when we really start getting that ramping up and that anxiety is there. I'm like, I just wanted more of that. Maybe an obstacle of, cause you got your, your big spider. Sure. But it's, <laughs> I think this movie suffers from the thing where I get so bored with creature movies where the third act is, we're just, we're just shooting all these CGI spiders and I could maybe, you know, use some more like, but also we have this mayor who is trying to sell this mine and therefore the entire town to a company and is just going to fuck up our way of life here and make us drones to this big company. I just would want more of that, you know? Mm-hmm. Ma- like maybe we find out Wade has this would I feel like you'd have to rewrite the whole script to kind of make this work, but maybe Wade realizes oh he can use the spiders to his advantage because they are <laughs> around all they're around that big gold vein that they find at the end which we find and then no one really talks about it except the little bookend Mm -hmm. with the gold teeth but maybe he realizes oh well if the spiders are all down there maybe i don't want the spiders dead right now or i want them to kill david arquette so he's almost you know i don't know i just i always like having a human a human antagonist yeah that's where i'm going with you need a john voight yes you need a john voight who is He's not like on the side of the anaconda, but he is. What would John Voight sound like talking about spiders? <laughs> you know how women love breakfast in bed. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. It's uh, weird how I keep coming back to Anaconda as a movie that does this all really well because it's not a good movie, but it is a good movie. <laughs> it does the. It's better than Lake Placid. It does the human. <laughs> aspect of making a story interesting really well Mm -hmm. especially when it comes down to the third act because third acts in these kinds of movies are where i'm always really fucking bored this one included unfortunately yeah because the third act of anaconda is you have john voight you're there about his spider wife or uh, not wife snake yeah sorry but he's you know they're fighting the giant snake but they're also fighting john voight and it's a bit more interesting whereas this is just I don't know. We're fighting these CGI spiders, and which is a bummer because I I liked this movie a lot up until they all convene at the mall, and then I'm asleep. Oh, it fizzles out. I also think that they, um, you know, and we're just getting ahead of ourselves, but whatever. whatever. Uh, I'm I'm feeling the wine a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so for sure. <laughs> whatever. Uh, what they what I noticed was the characters in the third act. It kind of really felt smaller. Uh, yeah. because like Harlan and the deputy, deputy, what's his name? Pete. Pete. He's a fun guy. He's a fun character to have I around. Like Pete. He's a bumbling. I have a soft spot for just bumbling idiot cops in movies. Mm-hmm. So those two like disappear. They don't die, but they just kind of disappear. And it just comes down to like David Arquette and Carrie Wu are running around. I mm-hmm. uh, still don't know if I'm saying her name right, but yeah, it just feels a lot smaller in the third act, and it's just running from CGI spiders. Yeah. Because, like, th- they have the, the barbershop dude, the older guy. Oh, yeah, and that he doesn't survives really come to much. a little bit longer than you'd expect, but then just has a scene where he gets got, and it's like, well, why did he hang around in the first place at all? Uh, they kind of introduce some bar patron, that guy in the hat. Uh, at some yeah. point, and then he another Dude, movie this, comes of him. This other guy in the bar that the looks like Alan Moore snuck onto set. Oh, the dude with the beard enjoying his dinner. What the fuck? The dude with the beard who like that's a lifestyle. That's not just a beard. That's yeah. a lifestyle. It's like down to his fucking abdomen. For, for all I know that is Alan Moore. I don't know. <laughs> he's he lives with among the spiders and realizes <laughs> oh it's time and goes back to his spider clan and. Uh, I don't know what's up with that guy. <laughs> speaking of Deputy Pete, he has a cat named Zeke, and there's Aww. this little scene where Zeke the cat gets pulled into the or it runs into the air ducts because they're like doing home yeah, renovation. Yeah, he goes in, into the drywall, which and, like her, their paws are punching through the wall, and then the face is punching through the wall and it's going up. And R.I.P. Zeke. Yeah, and I was like, oh, cats are always used as comedic relief. Always, it's cats and tiny dogs. 
Okay, yeah. Are always punchlines. I, I don't know why I was thinking about that right before we were filming. And I just, I'm sure someone's already written a kind of insufferable thing piece about <laughs> the idea of like cats and tiny dogs we associate with women. Feminine, yeah. <laughs> and big dogs are masculine and manly. And so a, a death of a big dog is a tragedy. <laughs> or a, the death of a cat or a tiny yappy dog Someone is find us funny. This article. I'm sure I'm sure it exists somewhere, but there, I mean there's something to that. I'm just saying it <laughs> you could write an article about it that's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, What's the other uh, Gladys's dog is Bruiser. Named? Bruiser credits credited uh, Bruiser as himself. Oh wow! Bruiser also gets eaten, yeah. taken away. What is he? A French bulldog? You said? I think he's a French bulldog. Yeah, yeah. he's like a medium sized dog. So I love that, when Bruiser bulldogs. got got, I was like, all right, equal opportunity movie. Yes, they're taking down dogs and cats. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, everyone's making fun of David Arquette's goatee. This is a weird thing that doesn't age well. Kind of like the pasta joke in <laughs> arachnophobia. What does he say? He's like, well, at least on the bright side, now that we're not in San Francisco, we don't have to call this pasta anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't have to call this pasta pasta anymore. I still didn't. I didn't get any resolution on that joke. I yeah. ran that by a few people who might know, and they all just said, no, it's just a weird dated thing yeah for anyone who may be younger facial hair was not uh as much in style in the early 2000s no, 2000s clean shaven for sure and then chin straps i rocked a chin, chin strap, strap for landing a while. strip uh you know the, or the oh the, the flavor saver the flavor saver yeah <laughs> i think the facial it was if you had facial hair you were more just alt maybe yeah, it's, no one had the full beards that came into style in the 2010s. 2010s, late 2000s, are we're getting beards because that's when hipsters are a thing. Yeah, it, beards were originally I, a hipster let thing. Let me just say, I was before you were on board for a while. I was before the curve on mm -hmm. mustaches and beards to the point where my girlfriends would all make fun of me because it was like such a weird, quirky thing. Like, oh, Chelsea likes beards. Yeah. But now beards are just extremely normal. Yeah, for me, late high school, college was a chin strap yeah. or just the goatee. And chest hair, too. I was very into chest hair. Sorry, I can't deliver on that, hon. You have some chest no, hair. No, you can't say that. <laughs> There's like three strands. You can't say that. <laughs> but David Arquette has a very respectable goatee here. It's totally here. fine. It's, it's extremely well kept. I mean, it's kind of like what I got going on now. It's Maybe pretty, a little lighter. Yeah. But, but uh, everyone's like, oh, my God. You look, your face looks like a stripper's crotch, yeah. his aunt look says. Look at this merkin on your face. <laughs> So he gets it shaved. When he gets it shaved, he looks he looks young. There's an edit there that I enjoyed a lot where this old dude, because he's got this the really barber. shaky hand, and he's going to give him the a straight razor, razor, the yeah. straight razor shave, and it cuts to, because when he, he moves the razor down, and the sound effect there is the razor noise combined with the sound of a, a motorbike. Mm -hmm. I jumped. I just, for some <laughs> reason, it just... Ugh. I, I hate watching people get straight. Oh, dude, shades. the the motorbike scene is that where we're at? Where we're Bre all over the fucking sure. place. Sure, Brett and his bros are motorbiking, but Brett's in the truck with Ashley. That's right. And he's he's moving in on her, and she's literally saying no repeatedly, and he keeps yeah, getting in on it's her. Uncomfortable. It is, but then she pulls out a taser. Or uh, uh, yeah, I think it's a taser that her mom gave her, and she uses it on him in his on crotch, his on his dick, and he pisses himself. And he yeah. has a Good hilarious line. He's like, "Damn it, I'm pissing my pants." <laughs> <laughs> and then she has a great line. I can't believe my mom was right about you. Do you know how embarrassing that is? Yeah, I liked that a lot. Awesome line. Yeah, this she whole thing is weird to me. What that he. We don't have any comeuppance for him. He, I know he got tased pants. in the balls. Tased in the balls is pretty bad, as is him continuing to try to uh, make out with her and grope on her as she says no. Yeah, yes, it's he doesn't get killed. He survives. No, he does, the that's movie. the thing is, and and granted, just remember we're talking about horror movies. Yeah, rules. yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my in my horror movie, that dude dies. Yes. Because he's a borderline, he's a he's going. He would have been a date rapist if she didn't have a taser. On 
in the end of the movie, I don't remember because I had kind of checked out by the end. I don't think there's an implication that they get back together. Is there a shot of them being like... I don't know, but they are friendly and act like nothing happened. I don't... I'm not sure if I would say that they're friendly. From what I remember in the third act, when they finally recommit... Because that guy, he's riding his motorbike around the mines for like the entire second half of this movie. He's just by himself. He finally meets up with the others and she sees him and she's like, Hey, Brett. Like, there's not this big, she's not hugging him. She's not, like, grateful that he's still alive. But it's alive. weird because then there's no, like, what's the conclusion of that? I think the conclusion is you you lived, you're lucky. I don't know. I don't think they get together in the end. I see, I see it both ways. I just, even just from script writing rules, it's like either have them get back together, which I would hate, or kill them. I think it's fine threading the needle there. Just like, okay, buddy, you better have learned your lesson. I guess. Because we get the awesome... (laughs) He does kick a spider while doing a motocross Um, jump. The my favorite part of this movie is Is right here. The motorbike spider Mm -hmm. chase, the most X game shit. I love it. Yeah, because she drives away after tasing his balls. And he runs up to his friends, and they're like, dude, you pissed yourself. And then the spiders attack. That's the scene with the <laughs> the shot. That's a direct homage to them. Oh, when they're coming when up the hills. When his friends yeah, yeah. see the spiders. Yeah, so they all. It is a great scene. It's very good. And it's, I even said, oh, this reminds me of, this would be a hard level of a video game. There is an Eight-Legged Freaks video game. I saw that squash them all or something like that. So, Time to yeah. squash or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming that these clips were all over the trailers i have not watched a trailer but if you don't include motocross kids uh running and riding away from spiders you're fucking up your marketing dude they even do the i don't know what you call this where you're still hanging out of the handlebars but you kick your legs up and he kicks a spider in the face oh my god he x games this to safety he does yeah. Although in the process, the spiders do knock over a gas t- a gas truck, blow it up, knock down the phone lines. That's when that happens. This see, it's it sucks that that whole scene to me was so much more fun and exciting than the finale. Oh, for sure. This is the peak of the movie. I would it say. is, and Motocross I motocross spiders. Wish that somehow that could have been the finale because I actually <laughs> gave a shit during this part. It's fun. It's a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, and the spiders get some personality in this scene without it getting to be too much. Like they get a little like, bit Meh. too much in the end. Frank Welker just getting all that sweet cash. And some from other this movie. Uh, Rob, Rob Paulson, Paulson and yeah, Kevin anim- Michael. I know Rob Paulson's Richardson. Animaniacs. Um, I saw Kevin Michael Richardson did what a joke, the Joker and Batman from uh, t- 2004 to 2008. So. Oh, I don't know. They're th- the three of them are playing these voice in these spiders, and the spiders get too gremliny by the end. They're a little, yeah, they're gremlins. They're making sad noises when they get killed, and they're making like giggling noises as yeah, they attack. It's they have too much. Weird little personalities almost, which at first I was into, but then it's yeah, it's too silly. Yeah, it goes a little too far for yeah, me. Yeah, I'm not as into it. There's some real as as much as there is like. Most of the CGI in this is pretty decent for 2002, but there's some shots, especially where any liquid textures are involved, because I know liquid's very hard to animate, but there's a scene in uh, Scar Joe's room, because one of the spiders busts in through her window. And, and is webbing up webbing her, her and David Arquette. And uh, it, uh, Carrie Wooer shoots it, and it just spews green kind of Shrek goop oh, everywhere. Oh, yeah, it's just like the... But I... Th- when we were watching this, I went, oh, man, that looked so bad. And you just went, oh, I didn't notice. I was looking at the Third Eye Blind poster. Yeah, so you didn't see. You'll have to watch the this episode later. To Did it look the... like the Portal 2 gloop that comes out? Like the blue or the orange, like, no, it <laughs> looked... kind of like toothpaste No, it looked like the in, in Shrek when... <laughs> He's brushing his teeth and he uses the slug. Yeah. It looked like that. Okay. Yeah. It, well, it didn't look like Portal. Okay. Yeah. It was like questionable early 2000s textures. It's not great. While David Arquette's shaving off his stripper's crotch, uh, Aunt Gladys gets abducted by a uh, spider. She gets webbed up. Mm-hmm. I do, but she's not killed. Yeah. A few people end up, I think it's just her it's and just the her. mayor. 
the mayor lives to Wade. That's right. He does they live. They find him. Oh, I just yeah. forgot. Yeah, they find I don't remember what happens. He, just... he lives long enough to see his precious mall getting blown to shit. Yeah, he's like, not my mall. My mall. It's funny because I yelled that while we were watching it. The mall just starts getting fucked up and I'm sitting there going, my shopping mall. Apparently, that was the actual demolition of that yes, I did. abandoned mall. Dude, if you're a filmmaker and someone is like, hey, we're demolishing this building so you can use it and do whatever you want, that's the it's kind of like how, uh, I hate to keep going back to wrestling, but for the money in the bank this year when they had it at WWE headquarters because they're moving headquarters so they could just fuck around with the building. That's the best. So that is good. just that's just <laughs> blank canvas. Just yeah. Just do what you- Fuck oh, it up. That's ideal. That must have been so fun. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much less stuff. And I bet that's just so much cheaper because there's so many less people on set that you'd have to have there making sure you don't fuck up their mall. Mm -hmm. Because I'm guessing in a a movie where, let's say this is an actual mall that is still functioning, you've probably got people from the mall on set. Oh, yeah. Making sure you don't mess shit up. Yeah. Um, uh, just being narcs. So yeah, so Gladys gets spun into a web, and I kind of like how the end of the movie is David Arquette being like, "No, I got to go save my elderly aunt." Yeah, he yeah goes to save her, and they X Games to safety. <laughs> if you get that reference, you're a real one, by the way. What are X Games not a thing anymore? No, I'm saying that's our our Treasure Planet, uh, Drunk Disney. That's right, yeah. X Games to safety. That's oh, why I, I screamed X Games to safety while we were watching the movie. Hell yeah, dude! Early two thousands, uh, the best. Wait, was it Atlantis or Treasure Planet? That was Treasure Planet. He's got like a surfboard in that. Oh yeah, which is a better movie than Atlantis, right? Is I like that tre- where we landed. Yes, I like Treasure Planet more. They were like they were on either side Atlantis, of the fifty percent. Atlantis, mark. I think, is boring mm-hmm. and not funny. The oh, humor, it's got the weird tone. The humor in that makes me want to. Like, oh, two hundred people just died. Let's yeah, keep moving. It's just not funny. Mm-hmm. It just all those jokes just land like a brick. I don't. I'm not into it. For more information, look up Practical Folks. After they are all aware of the spiders, they're waiting for Deputy Pete to get to their house, and they hear something on their roof, and they're like, "What's that? Oh, maybe the." Bitch, fucking what do you spi- think it is? It's a fucking giant. We were just watching a spider like just fucking do donuts on your lawn and tear it up. It was ScarJo who think? says it too, and she was getting webbed just not 15 yes, minutes ago. Then she hears is. something on the roof, and she's like, "What's that?" Oh my, it's Santa Claus, bitch. Who, do, who the fuck do you think it is? So they go to Harlan's trailer at some point too because they realize all of, all the, the phone, phone lines, lines are, are down. down. Which this is done in a clever way. That happens when that big uh, tanker blows yeah, the up X with Games all the gas. Thing. Yeah, so it's done in a way that feels organic. Mm-hmm. We're not just throwing in a line like, oh, wow, we don't have service. It's no, all the phone lines are fucked because of the spiders, which it's clever. It's good. I I like when a script can do that and it feels like it's smooth. I'm not taken out of the movie. Mm -hmm. So they go to Harlan's trailer where he hosts his conspiracy radio, um, which I, I meant to bring this up earlier, but I feel like this, this, like we were talking about how conspiracy radio back then just it's more it's more quirky and kind of fun it's harmless goofs it's it's like the idea of how towns now all look the same you know where they they bring this up a little bit where it's like we want to sell the mines and stuff and how small towns all end up having chains and chain restaurants and shit and everywhere looks the same and it's kind of like now every conspiracy nut is also kind of the same, you know? It's all like very, like, we're, they're all like QAnon, and <laughs> it's just all very broad. And I, you know, we brought this up earlier where conspiracy people had to work a little harder back then to be, <laughs> to find fellow conspiracy weirdos. Well, there wasn't the internet, or at least there, there wasn't was the, internet the internet as we know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You had to, you had to put in a bit more elbow grease. And then that's how you get a, a, a diverse, uh, biosphere of conspiracy Mm -hmm. weirdos and it's more fun it's actually it's like big chains it's like the wall (laughs) like QAnon's like the Walmart of conspiracies it's like I don't mind a weird conspiracy, but let's keep I don't it mind local. My, I don't mind your mom and pop conspiracy Yes, I want my mom and pop conspiracy theorists back. It's not fun anymore. Does that make any sense? Yeah. You know, I want to go back to bad America. (laughs) (laughs) 
me go. But this is another moment where it, it makes me... I got annoyed at the way the characters are acting in the script because you've Harlan who up to this point, conspiracy theorist down for whatever is extremely nervous about being probed in the butt. Oh yeah. He's very, he's um, very no homo about these anal probes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, so Carrie Wooer and her family show up and they're like, there's giant spiders outside. And for some reason, this is where we draw the line. David Arquette calls it out. He's yeah, like, he does. He does. And then they convince him that they're spiders from Mars. That's right. Yeah. yeah. David Bowie's here <laughs> with his spiders. Yeah. So I guess uh, they played it left hand and made it too far. Yeah, that's how they're able to broadcast the whole town. Who and they get them all to hole up in the mall. And for some reason, pretty much no one in this town has guns. Yeah. I call that's bullshit. when I call bullshit. This fucking Arizona small town. These people are locked and loaded. Yeah, man. They are all, every single person in this town is the characters from Tremors. Tremors. <laughs> every Gross single and- person. And honestly, <laughs> that makes this a more fun third act for me. If oh, the that entire, they're now- If the entire oh, oh, town would, yes. is like going Yeah, because absolutely- she even says in the broadcast, everyone, arm yourselves, meet at the mall. They everyone have, gets like- there and they have like fucking uh, hose and shit. They have, yeah, I swear someone has a fucking water polo st- I'm like what the fuck everyone should have there is a guy here who in true early 2000s form yeah. has a blank white hockey mask and a chainsaw because for some reason people think Jason in the 90s chainsaw. and 2000s yeah. people were like Jason the guy with the hockey mask and the chainsaw. Simpsons Bart, had a reference. Bart, do you want to see my chainsaw and my hockey mask? Yeah. I don't know why it's that so was bizarre, such a misconception. Yeah. And I think nowadays people are more aware. Yeah. I think, or maybe we're just too deep in the I horror think we're, hole. No, I think we're too far in. Do but also still- now <laughs> if I make a horror movie, I'm going to have a reference to that. I'm going to have a character with a hockey mask and a chainsaw. No, you don't perpetuate it's that meta. stereotype. It's meta. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah but yeah i call bullshit on this town and they're so reluctant to fight i'm like are you kidding these people would be this is the best day of their lives right? are you kidding i'm not even i don't even live in arizona i'm down to fight some spiders yeah like shoot it's like i mean it's like starship troopers but unironic <laughs> yeah but not parody <laughs> just real i'm like fuck yeah i'm gonna go fight some fucking bugs let's do it <laughs> the only good bug is a dead bug <laughs> yeah i'm doing my part i'm doing my part <laughs> what a fucking good movie happy ending david arquette and carrie we were kiss and the happy so- ending <laughs> happens but not because david arquette reaches the top of the radio broadcast and calls and asks for emergency help because they don't believe him. The help comes from people who heard Harlan's broadcast and believe him about. That's the, right. Because oh, it's uh, Michael Ennis. Ennis. John. En- it's John, John, Ennis. John Ennis of Mr. Show fame. Who and was- also, who w- did a uh, was a guest star on a sketch show at Second City that I briefly wrote for. It's on my IMDb page. Nice. Writer for I think like two episodes that my did sketches got him? accepted. I did. I got That's to meet so him. Cool. John yeah. Ennis is so cool. It was cool. I was very excited to see him show up. Yeah, I don't know. That's Eight Legged Freaks. I enjoyed it besides the third act, which I was. Which we didn't talk about at all. They're, they're shooting not spiders. To talk about. They're they, yell, mines. they yell Eight Legged Freaks, which, oh, I guess there's some trivia. Citation uh, needed. Oh, really? On the, is it ad libbed type... line? No. Oh, this I saw different. David Arquette ad lib that line. Citation mm, needed. Okay. But no, no. I did also see yeah. a rack attack. Yes. This which is, they say in the movie, they call it they a rack say attack it twice. Because, yeah, the, I think Tom Noonan says, oh, it's an Iraq attack when and the spiders later, the fight. And the kid's like, oh, Iraq attack. And that was the original title, is mm-hmm. Iraq attack. But oops, it sounds too much like Iraq oh. attack. <laughs> Iraq attack. Iraq attack. You can, dude, he would, it's a rack attack. It's an a rack attack. It's an a rack attack. But Poland's going to help us. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Throw down that banner, boys. Oh, man, Boshera. Yeah, so apparently the title has changed because it sounds too much like a rack attack, and I think they just took that line from the movie and realized, hey, that'll work as a title. It's a better title lately. It is, it is a better title. How do you spell a rack attack? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <it's>, I think... <laughs> Yeah, better title. Um, it's so it is so f- weird going through movies from back then and looking at all the little things. 
that either never happened or were changed because of the Iraq War or 9-11. Yeah. Like movie that Spider-Man. came Spider-Man. Yeah, movie that came out the same year, I think. Spider-Man. There were like Taking trailers. Two, tire, uh, two towers out of it. Mm-hmm. Twin towers. So, okay, cool. Alien Freaks, we're going to be doing uh, more creatures. I think it'll be cool to do creature stuff until we're we're done moving. That makes it a bit easier for me. I still want to try and get out a podcast every week. They might just not be as polished because we're going to be moving probably in like a month. Yeah, we're going to have, uh, assuming this stuff with the house moves forward, which it sounds like it will, we're going to have a crazy couple of months out of us. Yeah, so... Bear with us. Um, I'm going to try and get out as many episodes on time as possible because I still want to, you know, I still want to have a podcast every week, but they, yeah, they might just not be as a uh, uh, finesse as, <laughs> as I set a high standard, I think, for the show and we're about to come in well under the bar maybe for these <laughs> next few, but that could be fun too. So uh, I don't think we have any ideas in mind necessarily for what's next. So if anyone has any ideas for fun creature movies. Yeah, because it's still summer. Let's keep going with creature movies. This is August, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll get to it's it. It's August 3rd, huh? It's our anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> that it is. That it oh, is. Oh, man. All right. Let's, All right. Let's go. Let's finish. Follow the social media <laughs> stuff at Dead Me James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Carebeck, C A R E B E C C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, com. we got some new stuff. New cool stuff. We got a, oh, that's nice. Oh, that's sure. nice. And among other things. So, yeah. I can't believe I'm still not verified on Twitter or Instagram. Why are you thinking about that now? Because I said I just said Twitter and Instagram. Oh, I okay. And it's yeah, bullshit. It's a, bullshit. it's a little bullshit. Whatever. Blue checks are bougie. <laughs> and uh yeah. Tune in next week for whatever we have mess. in store. All but right. uh until then I'm James. I'm jealous. This has been the Dead Me <laughs> Podcast or some variation thereof. <laughs> <laughs>